Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins along with Apollo Asteria, my brother Brent Cousins, and Dr. J from Dr. J Radio Live. We're going over the phenomenon right Sana. now. Let's just roll it. So it is. Sana. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. Lots of the UFO videos in tonight's episode. So buckle up. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button for the latest phenomenon videos from around the world. We're looking at something captured and we're seeing this the broad daylight footage is what we're all looking for or we're seeing it right now something hovering in the sky and it's caught these people's attention and thank god they filmed it brent your thoughts on this yeah tonight's episode is going to be massive we got all sorts of information coming in crystal clear footage of ufos that's going to blow your mind even some leaked footage out of iraq which is very interesting lots of stuff on the table tonight we're looking at some sort of object off in the distance quite some miles maybe about a mile and a half to two miles just dropping behind the tree line there it this really represents scale this thing's massive whatever's hovering up in the sky we're seeing a good close-up right here it's very interesting it, it has this classic dish shape a lot of uh things the anomalies really present that this thing's really there this is no cgi what we're seeing is in real time and somebody captured something amazing apollo yeah, it definitely seems like this is a sort of seemingly anti-gravity craft here i like how the camera is kind of moving around but it the flying object is staying in one place here and moving around a little bit but um so yeah this is really interesting i think uh it's definitely legit dr j your thoughts uh, well, we always have to be careful on you know because things can be fake but just like you all said i tend to believe this one's actually real and the people are excited you could tell obviously i don't understand what they're saying unless we translate that but they're definitely excited about what they're seeing and it is a classical you know saucer shaped object and one of the great things about it is that the fact that it goes behind the trees and the mountains too which gives it like you said the scale but also a point of reference with trigonometry you could actually you know figure out the size of this craft yeah good point there and uh, again from the perspective that i'm looking at it and the distance this thing would have to be at least i don't know 150 to 200 feet in length some people might dismiss this as some kind of kite i i don't think so what we're looking at is something unexplained it's a real phenomenon and there's no uh, manipulation going on uh, we're looking at something authentic more footage coming into third phase of moon something traversing over the lunar surface guys take a look at this The video lasts for some time, but if you look closely, right there, out of the caldera, some shimmering object traversing a little bit uh, right to left, or left to right there, excuse me, uh, something is captured by an amateur astronomer that can't be explained. Uh, we're speeding up the footage so we can see uh, this object uh, traverse across the lunar sky. Is there some kind of secret space force or some kind of base on the moon that uh, this thing is... Uh, taken off out of i don't know i've never seen anything quite like this this is uh, shocking evidence here damn blake this is maybe smoking gun footage of some anomaly traversing uh, over and out of the crater of the moon right there if this is indeed real we're looking at something that needs to get on cnn it needs to uh, splash all over the world because this is amazing it really proves that possibly there's something happening on the moon that there's some sort of extraterrestrial craft or maybe a, a government program of uh, having moon bases and we're seeing some operation there have you seen this dr j your opinion 
You know, I'm so glad you just mentioned that, friend, about the moon bases. We've been having talks about moon bases since the 50s, before we actually even made it to space and long before we had the first man on the moon. Now, again, assuming this is real, it could either be that we're, we have our own bases and this is our technology, possibly reverse engineered from, you know, crash and retrievals, or what if it's his possible ETs on the base? Or even if it's not an ET base, what if it's just ETs going check out in the moon, going into the crater and coming out? Either way, this is one of the more compelling videos. Uh, I wish it was covered by CNN. Unfortunately, as we all know, they only take things lately on mili uh, from military. But this is one of the better things that I think a lot of astronomers who watch the moon should talk about this. You know, one thing I think to keep in mind here is how many missions have been sent to the moon. Uh, you know, even myself, I didn't realize how many people had actually been sent to the moon until I looked at uh, I looked it up recently. And apparently it's like over 22 people are recorded to have been actually on the surface of the moon. So I think, you know, in all these space programs, they're sending up ships all the time with these kind of disclosed projects. So who knows what's happening? You know, like there could be a lot of projects going on up there that you know, the public isn't aware of. And also things going on on the dark side of the moon. Let me add one thing to what apologists said. Uh, one interesting thing that Edgar Mitchell said, either in an interview that we were able to capture or something that he said before he passed away that I did have a chance to record because he didn't sound too well. He said that there was a lot of military astronauts and none of those figures are disclosed, disclosed publicly. I would not be surprised if we have plenty of missions to the moon and don't forget the soviets kept having people that went up as cosmonauts and passed away and a lot of them were kept secret what if the soviets did make it to the moon before us but didn't survive there so i wouldn't be surprised if there's been countless missions to the moon that we don't know of yeah again looking at this footage if this is legit which i believe it is or, or this is an amateur astronomer that captures something in in his lens and his telescopes actually doing a really good job you can see the atmospheric distortion of our earth as it shoots through it the the waves everything that that's look that we're looking at here i believe is legit that it's this is actually there really close to the surface of the moon maybe it could be a little farther or not uh that's up for debate but we're looking at something real special here yeah the way the optic works in my opinion whatever we're looking at is just basically as in focus as the crater behind it so in my opinion it's really close to the surface of the moon uh, being that the optics uh, work that way if this object were closer to the lens it you wouldn't be able to see it it'd be blurred out so we're looking at something that's unexplained and i wish nasa would just get involved look at some of the third phase of moon footage that's been submitted from the people around the world the amateur astronomers are on the cusp of disclosure but yet nasa gives us no answers whatsoever they have an investigation that's happening right now but what have they given us absolutely nothing uh, nasa never a straight answer i hate to say that but it seems that they just don't jump on these videos that are so compelling with any kind of explanation and again some people might say this is a drip on the lens or uh, dismiss this as um, an artifact in my opinion I, I don't think that's what we're looking at we're looking at something that is actually unexplained and we need answers this thing is close to the crater right there on the lunar surface and if this is legit which i think it is this thing's massive at least a football field maybe even uh over maybe two football fields or three in length here i would believe much larger this crater uh, on the side of the moon we're zooming in on it it, it could be uh maybe the size of a, a little city we just don't know but again we're looking at this anomaly you really can't push out a lot of detail because the quality of the lens and his equipment could only move it so far but right now we're looking at something again near the surface of the moon i think third phase of moon actually just dropped about 10 compelling moon videos this past month it's just amazing it seems like there's more activity there than usual 
Uh, you know, lots of incredible activity coming out of the moon. You know, we get videos all the time like this here, and it's really interesting. I mean, I think that there's definitely a phenomenon. Like, I think maybe there's programs going on there, but there definitely seems to be something with things coming out of craters. Seen a lot with that. And just look at how this shoots out right here. Like, what is that? There's, there's definitely something going on there, and that's not a meteor going to the moon. It's coming out. So there's something flying out of there. It kind of looks like there's almost like a base or something when you zoom in there. I mean, what is that? I mean, is that that's not a crater? That doesn't look like a crater to me. Uh, Dr. J, again, we've spoke with um, astronauts right here at Third Phase Moon. Edgar Mitchell, um, I think sixth man on the moon, third mission to the moon. Uh, it was the last interview we had with him. He was a big advocate for uh, existence of aliens amongst us what do you think's going on there is what's going on in the moon ours or is it extraterrestrial in nature you know i this comes from when an interview that i did with linda moulton howe and before neil armstrong died she had an interview set up with him and unfortunately he backed out last minute but she got to speak to several people close to him and he did admit that when they first got to the moon and were even flying towards the moon or approaching the moon that they were being tracked by you know what they called non-terrestrial craft when they actually were landing on the moon they said out in the distance they saw that they were being observed on the moon so is it time travelers that came back to see the first time we went to the moon or was it that we were going somewhere that ets inhabit and we're watching what we're doing there edgar mitchell although he refused to talk about ets on the moon did infer that he saw something outside of the spaceship or the apollo a capsule on his way back from the moon and one of the big reasons that he's such a big proponent uh for what what's going on with uh, extraterrestrials is because he grew up in roswell he happened to be in high school at the time the roswell crash happened he heard about it and then of course heard about the weather balloon cover-up after he came back from the moon and he was a national hero an actually international hero at that and went back to his hometown of roswell new mexico everybody who was part of the cover-up said hey uh, we want to tell you something and essentially spilled all the secrets to edgar mitchell so god bless his soul um, may he rest in peace but i wish he was still here because he was such an amazing figure for ufology to be able to confirm things like roswell and the moon yeah well said there dr j again we're looking at this really compelling footage that we've shared on third phase of moon but i, I think we need to reintroduce it again with a, what we just dropped earlier now looking at this activity that we're seeing some sort of like object disliked object uh tic tac like object escaping from the moon surface right at that center of the crater again we don't see it pass like it's coming in from right to left we see it emerge right dead center there which really uh fascinates me and it should fa fascinate anybody again uh third phase moon's dropping the big stuff we got a lot more stuff coming up again some leaked footage out of iraq i, it's, I think is really compelling and some of the goddamn clearest footage of a ufo that you'll ever see we're just getting started guys yeah super stoked on this uh footage brent showed this to me just moments ago i'm kind of blown away and i'm so happy to share it with you right here on third phase moon let's check it out So apparent footage leaked from Iraq. The military captured something, and we're looking at it in infrared right now. And uh, Brent has a little bit of information with regards to uh, this data that's been uh, kind of dropped and making the rounds right now. And we wanted to share it before um, the major media shares it, as we usually do right here at Third Phase Moon. That's why you guys are here joining us tonight. So make sure you tell your friends about the latest ufo videos check out third phase moon we're looking at this once again um, it's kind of reminds me of corbell videos i'm not seeing much but what makes you think that this is something that is worthy to be shared shared right here at third phase moon well it's coming from a war zone so that's interesting 2018 is a date so we're, we're looking at this uh, again 
people say it looks like a, a, a typical flying saucer, and I could agree with that. We see it doing these erratic moves, which makes you wonder, is that real propulsion going on? Is a vehicle actually doing this? Or maybe it's the infrared camera trying to, to target this object and uh, it's kind of a bouncing around, creating this kind of aspect where you're thinking the object's moving, but in fact, it's just a camera move movement. Again, there's a lot of footage that's been coming out, leaked footage. Is this all legit? Uh, it's all up for debate to debate right now, but we're looking at something that I wish we had in color, all the, the full footage instead of this uh, infrared, because it kind of masks what's actually up there in the air. Yeah, these maneuvers are really incredible. I love seeing this. And uh, you know, what comes to mind for me with this is um, the phenomena of UFOs being seen over war zones and, you know, depowering nuclear bases, that sort of thing. I wonder if maybe there's some sort of connection with this, but obviously also um, these military people have incredible technology that they're able to use to capture things like this. So that's really great too. Dr. J, what are your thoughts? Yeah, th this is uh, amazing footage because, again, this is more footage released by the military. At least somebody recorded it off the screen. But again, this seems to be what all the mainstream media only wants to cover. Going back to the Tic Tac Gimbal and Go Fast video, most recently the Jellyfish, and not to mention a few others. Again, every single one being military. And I expect more and more of these are going to start to come out going back decades i mean even this is 16 years old as of now and one of the greatest things about it is look how fast it goes from a stopping position to just zooming out of here we're talking at speeds uh, forget the speeds g-forces from over a thousand to possibly several thousand g-forces which would not only kill anything on board and i say anything because even if it's not human wearing an insane suit would be smashed to pieces and become jello or worse than that but even the structure of any craft anything we can create on this planet would never survive the pressures of such g-forces so this is awesome for many reasons uh first of all the shape we have typical saucer shape it reminds me again of something that came straight out of s uh, s4 the sport model uh it's also caught in infrared and night vision you have the person commentating about it and i think the radar or whatever it is, is is not trying to lock on it's just stationary which gives you a great example of how the object is jumping from different areas left to right right to left and you know diagonally up and all that fantastic footage and i expect more absolutely and uh the data comes into third phase of moon on a real-time basis we even got more footage for you right now uh coming into third phase of moon uh hit that thumbs up guys check this out Again, uh, we're looking at this. Mexico always lights up with the phenomenon. These flying saucers, these obscure uh, looking vehicles just being captured by the people on the ground. And again, we're, we're going to get a close up. Look, uh, people are complaining about clear footage or blurry footage of UFOs. We're looking at something that you can't deny. There's something up there in the sky. It's definitely not CGI. This is... Uh, very authentic footage and people are amazed again why in this region is it because of the air force or the equivalent of the air force in mexico can't engage these kind of uh, vehicles like they can in america uh it's a big question right there blake again it's happening in real time uh, this place just lights up colombia 
South America, this is a place for UFOs. Why are they so prevalent over there? What I like about what we're going to be showing you is these uh, crystal clear close-ups and slow-mos of what we're looking at here. And uh, it kind of, when you look at it, you don't see this thing moving. It's not bobbing like your balloon. And it's got these really sharp spiked edges. And this kind of silver column cone shape right at the bottom of this really uh, makes you wonder what this thing is. Uh, a really good close-up when you look at this as we move forward again you don't see this thing bobbing which seems like it has some sort of propulsion that we're not familiar with you know whenever i see these kind of spiky ball looking craft there's like a thing that comes to mind for me with uh fair fluid fair fluid is like this sort of magnetic fluid mixture that kind of can change shapes with the magnetic uh stuff that's in the liquid and this kind of reminds me of that and also nanotechnology can kind of work in that same way where it can sort of move and manipulate itself like that so it really reminds me of that ferrofluid and you know the possible connection to nanotechnology definitely dr j what do you think about this this is amazingly clear footage. Uh, you know, people always blame the tech or say that the footage is not clear enough. It's too blurry. Why can't we get something up close? But then when something super clear comes out, people complain that it's fake or CGI. It's almost as if people are never satisfied. Uh, again, if this is real, this is probably one of the best pieces of footage I've seen. It's also a very unique shape, which doesn't surprise me at all. You, everyone has seen the jellyfish footage by now, the jellyfish UFO. This is the first time I've ever seen this one, which I label this the, the type of shape as being like a top with spikes on the side. And also, the, the technology behind it, this is really interesting. Clifford Stone, as we all had a chance to speak to before he passed away, said there was two types of propulsion that the ETs told him about. One being what Bob Lazar talked about antimatter, essentially anti-gravity. The second being something that the ETs did not want to tell Clifford Stone because apparently we haven't even discovered dark matter yet. And it was supposed to be a dark matter reactor or dark matter, whatever you want to call it. The point is, we can't tell what this technology is, but it's certainly something that we don't have. Something silent, the ability to hover with no helicopter blades or anything like that. Uh, another point that you guys made a second ago is the fact that why is there so much amazing footage in mexico it is possible that we they don't have the technology or the military means to shoot them down the same way we do or at least did in the past but also mexico or in all of latin america seems to really believe this stuff never questioning it and have always been very open about it the moment something's caught on camera it's given to mainstream journalists out there and they put it on the primetime news, something I wish we had done. And there almost seems to be zero ridicule factor in Mexico. Absolutely, Dr. J, the open-mindedness in that region of our planet, it's kind of refreshing. Now, we wanted to share with you an adventure that my brother and I, Apollo Asteria, uh, we've been in the desert for about two months and we're just exploring the area, talking to people about UFOs. But in the meanwhile, we kind of made our own little movie. It's kind of like a home video. We kind of had a lot of fun with it. Uh, we wanted to share with you, uh, it's a little movie of ours, Aliens Abducting Aliens. And again, it's on location. It's kind of crazy. It's a little goofball, but uh, guys, if you want to have a little bit of fun, Check it out on Apollo's Odyssey. It's available right now on her channel. We're going to be supplying the original link. It's a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of different locations. It's kind of like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Anyway, let's roll the trailer right now.
aliens abducting aliens again the link is below on Apollo's Odyssey it's available right now it's a feature like film we just had a lot of fun in the desert kind of ad-libbing everything we had no idea what to expect we just saw the locations and wanted to uh, create something kind of unique yeah it was pretty interesting this journey we went on the story just kind of created itself as we went along uh, kind of in the beginning we didn't really realize what the story was but it, it was kind of weird how it just kind of came out we didn't really directed in any way it was just kind of happened it's really interesting but uh you'll see a lot of interesting places in this so definitely recommend checking it out john uh i'm gonna ask you a few questions on this but this was a two month adventure in the desert there's some extreme uh parts about it and we we experienced it all paula kind of gave us some back road tours of these off of these off beaten paths and we found these amazing places and we're like if you're gonna make a home uh, movie uh, just for fun, you might just watch it once at home. But if you do something like this, this it's kind of made for nostalgia, and we're just having fun with this. Doctor J, what did you think when when you watched this? I thought it was a fun little film. It's a great way to break away from the seriousness of ufology and the seriousness of things happening around the world. And not to mention, even though it's a fictional, you know, sh film, it has some basis in reality. For instance, when you guys check out what everyone's going to see soon, this cool little place in Arizona, which basically has a lot of ET stuff like alien autopsy or the alien in the jar again these are things that are very probable and i also love the locations from the sultan sea there's some really freaky stuff there like when you go into that room with things hanging from the ceiling uh toilet brushes for instance and the location i i don't know what state it is i don't recall from when you told me but the place in the movie that you portray is mars it really looks like it could be mars or well, the other one that's supposedly the moon from Jupiter. So again, a fun little film. I think everybody out there should give it a watch. It's free after all. It's not that long, it's under an hour. And uh, why not? I think everybody will enjoy it. I sure did. Appreciate that, Dr. J. Again, a lot of fun uh, road trips, filming on location. It doesn't get much better than this as far as a home video. Again, we just ad-libbed it. We were just out there and again impromptu guys enjoy it aliens abducting aliens it's a fun ride apollo's odyssey it's available right now in the description below tell apollo third phase of moon sent you everybody be safe out there and if you've captured anything amazing don't hesitate submit it to us right here at third phase of moon dr j apollo uh brent everybody be safe thanks over and out We'll catch you next time. 10-4. We'll see you next time.